In a world where the Fed has begun to raise interest rates in earnest, like they did earlier this month, you need to be very careful when it comes to picking high-yielding bond market alternative stocks. That's why on Wednesday I warn you to avoid the re retail real estate investment trusts. Their yields are becoming less attractive versus bonds. And many of their core tenants are aggressively closing stores. But not all REITs are created equal. Some might just be able to thrive in this environment. Take Apple Hospitality REIT, which is symbol APLE. It's a hotel real estate investment trust. Owns 236 Hilton and uh, Marriott hotels uh, across 33 states. Very well diversified. Fact is, the lodging industry is in better shape than retail. As a hotel Owner, it's a lot easier for Apple Hospitality to take up room rates than it is for a more traditional REIT to raise the rent on an office or a store. Plus, the company pays you a MAM at 6.4% yield. Unfortunately, though, Apple Hospitality stock is down 7% year-to-date, with the share price taking a real tumble after the company reported a poorly received quarter at the end of February. While the results were in line, Apple Hospitality's guidance was seen as lukewarm. Stock's now down 10% from its high a month ago. So is this a buying opportunity, or do we need to be more cautious? Let's take a closer look with Justin Knight. With, he's the CEO of Apple Hospitality. Find out more about how his company's doing and where it's headed. Mr. Knight, welcome back to Mad Money. Good to see you, Justin. Have a seat. Thank you for having me. All right. Now, when we were on last, um, I felt that you candidly were more bullish than you were in your conference call. And I'm trying to figure out whether that's you being cautious or if there just isn't more building going on and you're a little bit more worried that you won't be able to raise rates the way that you had been, say, when you were here last. Well, I appreciate you having me back on. It's probably a little bit of both. Okay. We, um, the, the world's a different place right now. And as we saw today, um, the stock market's uh, totally. continually in, in right. flux. We have government that's trying to decide what they're doing. Um, uh, the reality is the underlying fundamentals of our business are incredibly strong. Demand continues to increase. Um, the big question is, at what point do we see kind of the bump in the economy that enables us to really drive rates in a meaningful way? Well, but you did talk about in this one, in this conference call, that there's now more building. When we talk less, mm -hmm. we're talking about how hard it is to get a loan. It seems easier to get a loan, which therefore easier to have more hotels, which means therefore the supply's not as tight. Well, and, uh, to some extent that's true, uh, not universally. Okay. So I highlighted in our call, 40% of our hotels don't have any new supply under construction right. within a five mile radius. Um, it, you know, we are beginning to see more supply in our markets, but to a large extent that's following demand. We've seen constant demand increase across the entire United States since 2010, every year, year over year, and we're projected to see uh, demand continue to increase after that. Which are your strongest and which are your weakest markets? Uh, we continue to see strength in Southern California. Okay. Um, uh, Phoenix is a great market for us. We're seeing strength in some of the uh, southeastern uh, markets in the United States where companies are moving for lower cost, right. manufacturing companies right. and things of the sort. Um, we've seen some weakness in energy-dependent markets, which right. shouldn't be a surprise. Right. Um, and there are a few other markets that are dependent on foreign travel, like Miami uh, and New York, that right. have struggled as well. Right. Now, let's talk about the decision to do a monthly pay. Okay. And and uh, what? Why, how? First of all, people are going to say, why are they able to, and how are they able to? And second, um, it, it seems to me to be to me a major draw to want to own the stock. So why do you do it? Well, so our investor, our traditional investor, is a retail investor that, that was looking for a higher yield right. investment opportunity than a bond. Uh, the monthly dividend was a great fit for them that way. And we looked to diversify the portfolio and to reduce risk and volatility uh, you know, in our portfolio in order to create a bond-like um, instrument for them to invest in. Uh, if you look at our performance um, in recent months, right. um, you mentioned we're down. We're still trading within a very narrow band. And the beta on our stock relative to other stocks is, is incredibly attractive. Well, the, uh, the monthly dividend adds uh, to the appeal for that type of investment. Okay, there was a, a comment, you know, Canaccord at the earlier this month, a, good re a, a very good research firm said that they think that your uh, revenue, that your rev par, key metric, is set up to underperform peers, and they think that there's going to be margin erosion. Is, are they being too negative? Well, I, I mean, in part, Canaccord was disappointed that we were conservative in our, in our guidance okay. for the year, and, and we've always felt that it's better to underpromise and overperform. Right. Um, you know, what they would like to see us do is more transactions. Um, right. There may be opportunity, depending on the environment. Um, but in the meantime, 6.5% return we feel incredibly comfortable well, about You did some transactions. You've been very good at, get, at yeah. trading out of markets that you don't like and getting into markets that you do like. I've found that you do that whenever you think it's right. Uh, we do. We recently acquired a hotel in Fort Worth. We're oh. continuing to transact. We have a, uh, one of our hotels in Dallas uh, for sale right now um, that, that we'll trade here shortly. Um, you know, 
part of what makes our model work is looking at markets that have the greatest growth opportunity, shifting our portfolio in meaningful ways to drive shareholder uh, return. Last question. Um, you have four years old uh, portfolio. I know that after a certain number of years, you have to uh, remodel. Uh, you know, these hotels have to be remodeled because they do get beat up. But how young is that versus, say, the average of REIT that does hotels? Well, the, the average age of our portfolio is 11 years. The effective age is four, meaning that our hotels have been renovated um, right. and or uh, built within the last four years. Um, compared to the average REIT, it makes us, um, uh, we're significantly younger, okay, uh, which that's makes us more relevant. With yeah, consumers. that's very important to me, because I think that when you deal with these, people want young, they don't want shabby. Oh, no, exactly. All right, fantastic. All right, that's Justin Knight, President and CEO of Apple Hospitality REIT, which pays a monthly dividend as a very high yield. So those who want more yield, take a look at this one. Mad Money's back here. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.